Okay, so the topic of discussion today is, are you even in control? Um, and more specifically, we're gonna be talking about the subconscious mind and how it affects decision-making as a trader. We're gonna talk about how it affects your perceptions, your decisions and actions, um, and how it ultimately can negatively affect your bottom line results, your profitability, your consistency in the markets. Um, and as we're gonna discuss, the objective of this particular presentation is to educate on the subconscious mind and how it hinders traders' decision-making. Um, and I'm gonna be giving you the tools, the mental models, the understandings that you need to have to be aware of what's going on, to be able to manage it, and to be able to improve rational decision-making, which is ultimately gonna help you make more money as a trader. It's gonna help you um, gain more consistency, help you gain funded accounts, help you maintain the funded accounts. This presentation, this topic is really the cornerstone of decision making. A lot of the decisions, perceptions and actions we have are subconscious. They're, they're not, we're not aware of them. We're not aware of why we're making certain decisions. Um, so if you can get a grasp on this, if you can manage it, you can put yourself in a significantly um, uh, better position to make more profit consistently as a trader. That's really why I'm making this particular presentation. So what is the subconscious mind um, and why is it so important? Well. All incomplete perceptions and awarenesses and experiences, any experience you have in your life where you perceive more positive than negative or more negative than positive is going to be logged and stored in your subconscious mind. And this data, the more positive than negative or more negative than positive, will run you split seconds before you're even consciously aware, okay? So for example, if you touch a hot stove, this is a, a classical example, if you touch a hot stove, it's very likely that you're gonna experience pain in that moment and you're gonna say, all right, that's a bad experience, that's a negative experience, it's a painful experience, because in that moment, you're consciously aware of the pain, the negative, right, how bad it was, and that's gonna log in your subconscious mind as a negative resentment or a painful experience of the past. Um, and another example here is if you take a significant loss in the markets and you perceive more negative than positive to that, that brought you more pain than pleasure, that brought you more challenge and support, again, that's gonna be logged in the subconscious mind as a resentment in the past and it's gonna affect your decision-making in the future. It's gonna affect your perceptions in the future. It's gonna affect your actions in the future because you're gonna have an instinct to avoid these painful experiences again. Okay, so this is really key. Now this is a very profound survival response, um, but as I've discussed in my previous videos, as traders, you need to transcend that initial level of survival. We need to go to a higher state of thrival um, because a lot of the uh, threats that our ancestors were exposed to, we don't experience anymore. And these survival response actually hinder our ability to make profitable decisions as traders. So this is really key. Bad, negative in our perception, we're gonna log it as a negative experience in the subconscious and that's then gonna affect decision making or perceptions or responses in the future because we're gonna have an instinct to avoid this pain like an animal, avoid pain and seek after pleasure. The other examples, um, if you have a very pleasurable experience in your perception, you perceive more positive than negative or if you make a significant amount of money and you perceive that as a very pleasurable event, more positive than negative, this will log in your subconscious mind. Now, before we go any further, the key word here is perception. It has everything to do with your perception. It has nothing to do with the actual event because the event in actuality is, is neutral, right? If we make money, someone else loses money. So it's a neutral event, but because we're perceiving it as bringing us more pain or more pleasure than pain in this example, that's gonna be logged as a pleasurable event in, um, in our perception, in our subconscious. Now, you have to understand that People can take the same event and perceive it in two different ways. They can perceive it in a full spectrum of ways depending on their values, depending on their priorities at that point in time. The most classical example here is, imagine heavy rainfall, right? Now, heavy rainfall for an individual who wants to get married on a particular day and has planned the perfect marriage and perfect wedding and that rain is destroying their, their perfect wedding, they're gonna label that rain terrible and a, a bad event. But at that simultaneous moment, there's a farmer who's profiting from that rain and it's watering their crops and it's helping them grow and helping them have very healthy crops. And they're 
simultaneously while that, that individual who's getting married is labeling the rain bad, that farmer's labeling the, the rain good. So it's our perception of these events, it's not the actual event, but it's our perception that then stores the information as either a good, a bad, a terrible or terrific experience in the subconscious, um, which then affects our actions, decisions and perceptions moving into the future. So anything we perceive as positive, as more positive than negative, um, will have an impulse, will be loaded in the subconscious, will have an impulse to seek after these pleasurable experiences again. This is a very key um, concept, a key topic that uh, a lot of traders, in my opinion, it would be very smart for them to be aware of so they can learn how to manage it and they can understand, start to understand the inner wirings of their subconscious mind and how it affects decision making. Okay, so let me put a little bit of a diagram together for you discussing the subconscious mind. So let's imagine this little Cartesian plane is your mind. Um, and we have the positive at the top, we've got the negative at the bottom, and then we have future or imagination, and we have past or memory. So this is a little Cartesian plane. Um, and the one thing I wanna stress here is that the center point between the past and the future is the present moment, that's you, that, that center point in the middle. The, the center point between positive and negative, past and future, that's you in the middle. I didn't really put it on the diagram, but that's key. That's being present. That's being present with what is actually there right now. That's the present moment. Um, now, the y-axis, the center point between past and future is a mirror. This is also another, another key um, concept that I'm gonna use to, de to demonstrate what we just talked about. Let's say, for example, we are in the markets and we have a very painful loss in our perception. Perception, our perception. It's a very painful loss in the past. You see how it's more negative than positive and it's in the past. It's logged as a resentment happening to you in the past, okay? A negative event in the past happening to you. That's a resentment. Now, any logged resentments where we've perceived more pain than pleasure in the past is now gonna be mirrored forward into a future fear. And this may be unconscious, but there's a future fear there. And that fear in our perception is either consciously or unconsciously, there's gonna be a fear in the future of this more negative than positive event happening to us again. And this is key because any logged resentments in the past and the subconscious that future fear is gonna taint perceptions, decisions, and actions as a trader. We may have fear to do the very thing that needs to be done as a trader to execute on our edge, but because of our unresolved stuff in our subconscious mind, we're not gonna be able to do what's necessary to be done because of this dynamic going on. So when I ask the question, are you even in control? Sometimes these unconscious or subconscious emotions are making decisions for us, we don't even know why, but it's a very specific thing. It's very specific, and you can plot it somewhere in this Cartesian plane, you can identify it, and you can address it, you can manage it. And I cover this in great detail in the 12 week challenge. This is really what week five is about, helping traders, giving traders the deep understanding of their psychology and helping them identify and manage the things that are stopping them from being successful as traders. Okay, so that's for the negative. Same thing for the positive. We can have an infatuation with a certain win in the past that was very pleasurable to us. And that past event, which we perceive as more positive than negative, is gonna mirror forward into a future fantasy. This is where a lot of the expectations come in that I've talked about. We're gonna have this fantastical idea in the virtual market about making this profit or getting this percentage or getting this FTMO or funded account or my Forex funds, whatever it is. And it's these very specific logged moments of perception that we have that then create these emotional strings that run us and we're not in control. If you learn to manage this, you can be in control, but until you do, you're out of control, being run by your subconsciously stored data. And this is what's gonna be tainting decisions, perceptions and actions um, as a trader in the future. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, there are pros and cons to your subconscious mind. Just like anything, there are pros and cons. Your subconscious mind will store all positive and negative experiences in your perception, which is essential for survival, okay? For example, if a car is about to hit you, you will involuntarily 
most likely involuntarily jump out the way due to your subconscious mind to stay alive. So it's gonna, it's gonna be that fast response that you have to keep yourself alive. That's a benefit of the subconscious mind. You don't wanna, when a car's about to hit you, be standing there thinking about all the benefits of being hit by a car because you're most likely not gonna survive that experience. So the subconscious mind in a survival, um, in, in the context of survival is, is a beautiful response. However, like I've made mention, 99.999% of the time, you're not in an immediate threat in today's environment, right? Maybe our ancestors were thousands of years ago, but nowadays the, the, the likelihood of immediate threat to our lives is very low. We've transcended that stage in society. So talking to traders, talking to individuals right now, as I know I am, who want to thrive and who want to self-actualize and who want to become exceptional traders or exceptional um, business people or exceptional entrepreneurs or exceptional athletes or poker players, whatever it is, we have to learn to manage um, and understand and have self-awareness about the very biases that are, are responsible for survival, but hold back thrival and hold us back from becoming you know, thriving individuals. And this is really what this presentation is about. So what all my work's about is to help traders to be aware of this and to manage this. And I'm gonna be giving you actionable steps later on, but I wanna give you the insights first. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Now, your subconscious mind will keep you alive. However, it will impact your ability to thrive. And that's, that's really, really the, 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 um, the lesson for today is it will stop you from making rational decisions as a trader because the very response is there for survival. It's not there for, for thrival. We also have to understand that trading is about executing on a probability model. It's not about winning all the time. It's not about avoiding losing. Sometimes losing is very essential to be the next part in your probability edge. So we have to learn to transcend the survival responses to consistently execute on an edge. Now, how it affects your trading specifically. All subconsciously stored data affects and taints your perceptions, your decisions and actions. It affects the way you perceive the market and interpret the information in the market. It affects the way you make decisions in the market because we're gonna be sometimes making decisions to avoid that pain of the past and seek after that pleasure of the future, even if that's not what our rules say. And that's really the thing that trips up traders I've seen the most, traders who come through my 12 week challenge, traders I've worked with one-on-one, -on -one, it's that subconsciously stored data of trying to avoid the pain and seek after the pleasure that ultimately stops them from executing on the very edge that they need to execute on to have consistently profitable results. Um, and as a result, it also affects the actions as well. So it affects your ability to be present with the market and make process-based decisions, okay? As a result, if it is left unaddressed, the subconsciously stored data, you are likely to get in your own way and ruin your edge. You are likely to start trying to seek after pleasure, avoid pain, um, and go away from the very edge you've created that will reap you consistently profitable results. So the problem here that we're gonna be addressing is if you have incomplete perceptions where you see more pain than pleasure to losing or in losing, you will try and avoid losing. Okay, so of the past, I've had painful experiences losing. I see more pain than pleasure to losing. And in the future, I don't wanna experience that again. I have a fear of losing and I wanna avoid that. That's the amateur traders thinking, okay? or I see more pleasure than pain to winning. Winning in the past has been very pleasurable and I wanna seek after winning. I have a fantasy of seeking after winning as a trader. The issue here is that you will try and avoid the unavoidable and seek after the unattainable. We're gonna try and avoid losing, even though we know intuitively or intellectually that it's part of a probability. We have to lose part of a probability. And we're trying to seek after all winning, which is unattainable because we know we have to lose part of a probability model, okay? So the problem with not addressing the subconsciously stored data is we're gonna have unrealistic expectations on ourselves to avoid the unavoidable and seek after the unattainable. That is what suffering and stress is as a trader. I talk about in my 12 week challenge that the moment you change your expectations on yourself, because a lot of traders have an expectation that perfection as a trader is always winning, never losing. And that is, in, uh, in my opinion, an incomplete model. In my opinion, uh, perfection as a trader is both winning and losing. You have to win and lose because it's part of a probability model. 
but learning how to interpret both and not being um, deterred by the outcome, not being deterred if you win, not being deterred if you lose, but seeing those as necessary, a necessary part of the probability model and getting back to your plan. So I want you guys to be aware of this is a really key lesson here. And of course, I'm gonna give you the insights to start to transcend these labels um, so you can start being more process-based and have more realistic expectations in yourself as a result. Trying to seek after winning and trying to avoid losing will mean you will disrupt your edge. Okay, because the edge, the definition of an edge is that you're not gonna win all the time, right? And you're not gonna avoid losing. Losing is part of the edge. And I think if traders can redefine this whole idea as the perfect trader is one who both wins and loses, but they're not deterred by that and they know the benefits of losing, they know the drawbacks of winning, so they're not attached to winning and not trying to avoid losing, but they're neutral on the outcome, so they can stick to their, to their plan, they can stick to their edge, they can stick to doing what is known and proven to be uh, profitable through processes. It will also form unrealistic expectations prior to trades. So if I have an expectation that I wanna win on this trade, and then I go in with that expectation to a particular trade, now you, we're gonna talk about what we talked about in the confirmation bias, lecture, uh, confirmation bias lecture, where we now have confirmation bias to only let in information that supports that belief, cancels out any, uh, anything that runs counter to that. So we're now blind as traders, we're not taking on all the information, we're make, not making informed decisions, we're not making profitable decisions. All these challenges come as a result. It will leave you emotional when you take a loss. Because first and foremost, if you're trying to seek after winning, you're gonna have an expectation that this trade is gonna be a winner. If it doesn't align with the pleasure of winning, it's gonna be very painful. And on top of that, if you experience a loss, you're gonna compare that to all the subconsciously stored data of losing in the past, it's been very painful. And your response to that loss, you take that loss in through your perception, you compare it to all that subconsciously stored data and your brain releases the pain substances and you have a painful response as a result. So there are a host of challenges that, that come without addressing, if you don't address the subconsciously stored data. And this is ultimately why I've made this such a big part of the 12 week challenge. And I hold traders to, to go in and be accountable to addressing and managing what's been happening in the past so that they can free themselves up and be present with the market now and make the best, most informed decisions. So the solution, what's the solution? One needs to start to train themselves to see the other side of their previous experiences. Okay, that's a very formal way to say it. Um, but you need to start to see the other side. There, there are two sides to everything. Um, in my opinion and in my observation, the best traders out there are those who, when they lose, they know the benefits of losing. They're aware of both. Yes, the pain of losing, but also the pleasure of losing, right, which we're gonna get into in a second. They don't make losing bad, they don't make losing good, they just see it for what it is and they understand it has both advantage and disadvantage. And when they win, they don't see winning as good necessarily, they don't see it as bad, they just see it for what it is, it's, it's, it's part of the edge. And they see both the advantages and disadvantages to winning as well. So my opinion from what I've seen, from what I've seen in my studies of human behavior and psychology as well, if you can start to train yourself to see both sides of the outcome, the drawbacks of winning, the benefits of losing, you learn to detach from the outcome and you give yourself permission to just execute on the edge over a hundred, over a thousand trades, unemotionally in a sense, with realistic expectations and you're not attached one way or the other so you can make the most informed decisions and you can make refinements, right? You can, you can do what's in best interest for you because you're not attached one way or the other, i.e. the benefits of losing the drawbacks of winning until the outcome is balanced. We're not trying to make losing good. We're not trying to make winning bad. We're just trying to make them what they are, balanced, neutral events. So the solution here is to transcend the judgment on the outcome of individual trades. Transcend the judgment on the outcome of individual trades. So I take a position, euro dollar, great. It's you know, I get taken out for a, a loss. Okay, I'm not deterred by that because I know that was exactly what needed to happen in the next sequence of my probability model. For me, over a hundred trades, over a thousand trades to be profitable. Because trading, being profitable as a, or consistently profitable as a trader isn't about being right on an individual trade. 
It's about executing on a sample space. And if we're attached to the outcome of individual trades, it takes us away from actually being balanced to consistently execute on the sample space, the larger sample space. And I think, and this is a little bit of a, um, a little bit of a mind baffling statement, but I think the thing that stops traders from being consistently profitable is their desire to be right on each individual trade. Okay, think about that for a second. If we're so attached to being right on an individual trade, we're gonna disrupt the edge that is ultimately gonna get us consistent profits over a long period of time. That's why you see the best traders, they don't necessarily care what the outcome is on the individual trade, but they're measuring themselves over a large, larger sample space. Okay, the truth is that all events are neutral until we choose to judge them, or in other words, compare them to previous experiences that are subconsciously in our subconscious um, and label them good or bad. I used the analogy before that, you know, heavy rainfall can be labeled good or bad depending on what perspective you take, depending on whether it supports or challenges your priorities. So too, if your dollar moves 50 pips to the downside, if you had a buy order on that, you're gonna be labeling that bad, but the person who took the exact opposite side of the trade is gonna be labeling that event good. So the movement of price is neutral, but because it either supports or challenges our priorities, we choose to label it good or bad. And what I really help traders to do is to take a more neutral and overview effect on their particular position so they're not attached to that. They're not, they don't become a victim of the market, but they can just make the wisest decisions for, them, for themselves in that moment. So a little bit of a thought exercise for those of you who are still watching. I want you to go back to the most painful trade you've ever experienced and feel free to pause this. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna um, spend time, I'm gonna go through it, but pause the video as you, as you go and do this, but actually go back to a moment you perceived the most painful trade you've ever experienced. And you maybe have a loss there that you see significantly more drawbacks than you do benefits to, okay? And actually identify the moment you perceive that and you maybe had the emotional response as a result so go back to that moment and the quality question you wanna be asking in that moment is in that moment and from that moment until today, how was doing or experiencing that trade or doing the action that led to that painful loss, how was it actually a benefit to you in that moment and from that moment until today? How did that experience serve you as a trader um, and how was it a benefit to you? Okay, so pause the video, go back to the moment, have a look because what's happened is, think back to that graph, we have an experience or a moment of perception that's logged as a resentment, more negative than positive. And unless that moment, that specific moment is addressed and you've stacked new associations to that moment, it's gonna to continue to be logged as a resentment and it's gonna mirror forward into a future fear. But if you go back and you have a look, you ask yourself a quality question and you make yourself aware of the other side of that event that's there, but you've been blocking out with your bias, don't make anything up, just have a look. Have a look at what the benefits truly were. You're not trying to justify the loss, you're just trying to look at how it actually served you. And the moment you stack new positive associations to that moment, and you realize, you know what? This event wasn't actually bad. I chose to see it as a bad event because it challenged my priorities and I had confirmation bias to only let in the negatives. But now that I can look back at it and I can see that it actually served me to an equal degree, you no longer have that logged as a resentment. You see both pain and pleasure to that moment and in a sense you transcend that experience as a bad thing and it's no longer logged there in the subconscious as a, as a bad, painful resentment that's gonna mirror forward into the future fear. It's now a neutral event that you can see both advantage and disadvantage to. So the quality question you wanna be asking yourself is how is that a benefit to you? How did that actually serve you? How did it make you a better trader? Some great examples here um, is that the accountability you got to learn, continue to be teachable, continue to be open. It could also hold you accountable to make refinements and review and go back to what's priority. We also see that a lot of traders have their most painful trades after extreme winning periods and extreme states of pride. So these losses actually ground them they get them present, they get them to realize that they're not better than the market, but it gets them back to a state of equilibrium and presence so they can start listening to the market. Because often those biggest those biggest beats, those biggest slaps from the market come when you're not listening to the market. 
So the benefit therefore of losing is that it makes you listen to the market, it makes you refine and it makes you more present with the market. So go to that moment, have a look, how did it benefit and serve you? Did it make you aware of refinements to be made to your plan? Did it make you aware of things you're missing in your trading plan that you've now gone in and addressed? Did it make you go off and um, talk to new people and expand your network and learn from more people and be more open and be more teachable? Did it make you go back and focus on the psychology and human behavior concept of trading? There are benefits there. Just go have a look and make yourself aware of them. And as you start to stack those benefits, you start to realize, you know what? It's not a bad event. You, want to, you don't just want to stack one, two, three. You want to keep stacking moments, benefits in that moment until you can see that this is not a bad event. This is not a painful event. They have both pain and pleasure, but I just chose to see one side of the equation initially. Okay, quality question you can be asking yourself. Um, the other question you want to be asking is go back to the most pleasurable win you've had. Um, go to the actual moment you had the most pleasure from a win and ask yourself, how was it a drawback to you? Not to make the win bad, but you're just trying to ground it and see it for what it is. It's a neutral event. It has both pain and pleasure. So how is it a drawback to you taking that initial, initially pleasurable win, right? How is it a disservice in that moment or from that moment till today? Did it make you think you're invincible and start projecting low quality setups into the market? Did it close you off from being open and teachable and continuing to learn? Did it make you feel like you knew it now and you didn't need to continue to make refinements? You didn't need to. Did it make you complacent? Did it make you feel like you could slack off a little bit? Right? Did it make you potentially proud in front of other traders or communities or friends and family? How was it a drawback to you? So go back to the most pleasurable win and find the drawbacks of it. Because if you're attached and addicted to winning, you're going to be pained by losing, right? Because they're pairs of opposites. The addiction to winning actually drives the pain of losing. We're going to set unrealistic expectations in the market, seeking after winning, trying to avoid losing, and it's going to disrupt our edge. So being able to neutralize the outcome of both winning and losing will allow you to go back to your edge, to your processes, and go back to process-based thinking. And by the way, the more subconsciously stored data you have of this is bad, this is good, the more likely you are to set unrealistic expectations in the market um, and you, uh, outcome-based expectations, outcome-based decisions, more likely to take away from your, from your trading plan. Train yourself to see both sides of an event. This is why I put week five together in a 12-week challenge. If this resonates with you, I highly encourage you to jump in the 12-week challenge. I share complete processes on how I'm advising traders to go back and address this stuff so they can really move forward in the market, being present, making the best decisions. And we've seen an immense transformation in traders who actually implement this process, learn the process, um, and start implementing it. They get funded, they hold on to that funding, they all of a sudden aren't trading emotional wrecks, but they're poised, they're balanced, they're making the best decisions. They've empowered other areas of their life because trading isn't now such a stress and such a pain. Um, so it's a profound exercises. Do the exercise now, see it for yourself, hold yourself accountable, and then jump in the 12 week challenge. This will allow you to transcend the judgment on individual trades. This will allow you to be more present with the market. This will allow you to relentlessly execute on your edge, which is ultimately what's gonna to lead to consistent profitability in the long run anyway. So consistent execution of an edge that will lead to consistent profitability. The thing that's gonna take you away from consistent execution of your edge are your emotion, your emotions, which are the subconsciously stored data and baggage that we discussed today. Learning to go in there and address those, manage those, neutralize those, allows you to go back to your trading plan and gain consistent profitability.